You should be able to see that I'm outside the India consul, <laughs> <laughs> and I had company. It's the India consulate. You won't be able to hear much, so I'll edit it later. We're walking just cat a corner across the street, and we're going today to a special event. And you can see the sign. Unfortunately, it's all in Thai, but this is the uh, Cotton Fair. It happens once a year. There are other things. Here's the entrance, and you can see some ceramics and some woodworking. And I'm going to go inside and just do a short walking tour and then um, edit. This booth has indigo dyed garments with colorful piecework, typical of many of the hill tribe people in northern Thailand. Handmade baskets in this booth and the next booth has batik and then following that we have some beautiful hand printed and indigo dyed garments. This is one of my favorites. Notice the jewelry coming up on the mannequin in the next clip. Thai people are famous for their silver work, and it's something that I want to show you more of in future episodes. Here you'll see the traditional Thai wrap skirt, and this is used in regular cotton fabric and also in the very elegant silk fabrics that uh, Thailand is so famous for. I wanted to point out in this booth, these are not printed fabrics, they're actually uh, embroidered. Here we have the modern and the traditional side by side. In this booth coming up, we see a very modern style, which you could wear every day and still be wearing a garment that's distinctively Thai. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that short video. If you have any questions, uh, if something wasn't clear, or you just want more information, be sure and make uh, comments below on YouTube, or and please like me, because I like to know who's, who's watching. Uh, but you can make comments on YouTube or on the website, and I am on Facebook. There is a Facebook page, but uh, I really want to see the most activity on YouTube and the website because that's where most of the information is going to live from now on, and uh, Facebook will just be uh, links. And if I have something that I want to say that's just really quick or very local, I might put it on the Facebook page. But other than that, it's just supporting the website and the videos. So, Cotton Fair, great event. And there's lots more coming up because next week in Thailand is the their new year. And... I believe the rest of Asia celebrated New Year in February, according to the lunar calendar, but they, they have a different calendar, or I don't know if it's the calendar or the tradition, but they celebrate it um, a little bit later here. It's called Songkran, and uh, it's a very unusual festival, so I'll just tell you more about that the next time. 
I do want to talk about the knitting progress because actually since the new year, I, ha I had some things that were just really distracting and, um, you know, slowed me down. But the last few weeks, I've been really making a lot of progress, um, getting more clear on where I want to go with the website and the, the videos and doing some knitting. Now, here's the, the thing that I've been showing you all along, um, the little sleeveless top. And as you can see, I have completed, or actually this is the front. I've completed the neck for the back. All I did on the back was drop it down one inch. And if you find that um, your sweaters are like, they're pulling in the back and something's not quite comfortable. Try putting a little bit of curve in the back because when you, if you look at a dress pattern, there's usually about a one inch dip in the back and that will make your uh, garment sit more um, firmly. Usually it doesn't matter with knitted things, but I'm getting older, my shoulders are a little more rounded, so I thought I'd better put that in. Now this, when it has the binding, it should uh, become a V-neck. It looks pretty rounded right now, but that's just the natural, you know, stretch of the, the fabric. Uh, so again, I was using Ann Budd's book, and I did the, the sleeves the same as the front because that's the way she does it. Eventually, I hope to figure out how to um, to make the sleeve curve different in the front and the back the way you would with a sewn pattern because I think all those little things really help uh, to make a knitted garment fit really nicely just like uh, a sewn garment. But this was a, there was a learning curve on this and I didn't want to add too many more things because uh, I, the V-neck, and Bud does have a V-neck, but it's really high. So I'm experimenting with how to, to make it low. And then the one thing that's going to be an adventure is putting the binding on this. Um, because it's ribbed, I don't want a ribbed binding. It just seems like it would ruin the look of the ribbing. I'm going to put um, probably um, stockinette. And I've sent a message to um, Nathan on Sockmetician to ask him if he thinks I can do double knit. Because if I did double knit on the neckline and the sleeve binding, then um, I wouldn't have to fold it over. I could just knit up three or four rows and join together. And I would be able to see how it's going to be, uh, how it lays before I close it. And it would be bound off on both sides at the same time because I would pick up um, for either side. So we'll see what he says about that because um, I've only done one small double knitting project and it was basically for color. So that is my progress with the little sweater. I'm not sure how things are gonna go uh, once this is finished. I do have a crocheted sweater uh, also for summer that I started a while ago and it's in my whips so uh, that I think that may be the next project and then when I run out of summer things I may have to um, get some more patterns I guess I should sit down so you can see my face you might have noticed that I have a scarf and this is a good time to show this because um, I talked about the indigo dyed fabric this is a very thin cotton woven cotton and um, it's tie-dyed to get the two stripes on the bottom. And it's from a little shop in a nearby neighborhood. She gets these in in different colors. And the designs are different every time. But um, it's something that I can pick up scarves. And they're very useful in the hot weather uh, to keep around your neck. So that um, 
if it's a sleeveless thing, you don't have all that sweat on your neck that you have a scarf in between your hair and your neck. Um, the dress also is from Thailand. Um, I had to have this custom made because their largest size stops about two inches smaller in the bust than mine does. So those are uh, the Thailand stories and the progress and the purchasing. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, a website that I found or actually it's somebody who's on Facebook and he's doing uh, beanies and I'm going to put the, the, um, the link in the notes because um, I don't know a lot about him. I asked him for a bio and he said he'll, he'll send that so we'll, we'll just go into it more in detail next time. But um, he's making beanies and he's calling them meanies. And they're all for charity for a children's foundation that um, has a camp for kids who are in a family where somebody's had cancer. And you, if you've had any really uh, debilitating illnesses in your family, you realize that money for things like camps kind of disappears. So all the, the money for these beanies goes to this camp so that kids who might never get a chance to go to a camp can get away and he he really talks about that you know not to forget that there's stress on the children in the family when someone has cancer uh, we sometimes think that the kids don't feel it but they do and they need that break uh, so more about that next time uh, Thai cultures. I found out some interesting things at our expat club meeting the last time. Um, it was mostly about, you know, we do the, we call it the why, because it can be as high as this, and mostly for foreigners we just do this. But um, there were some cultural things that I thought were very interesting to know. I can't tell you where they came from. Hopefully someday I'll get an answer from someone who's Thai. But one of the things that you must not do is point at a rainbow. I don't know why. But it's good to know because I'd be one of those people who would go, look, a rainbow. Don't do it. I don't know why, but apparently uh, it's very upsetting. Um, don't set your purse on the floor. This is an interesting one because I have a habit of uh, when I go in a restaurant, I'll put it on the floor on the inside or between my feet so I don't have to worry about it falling off the chair or holding it in my lap. But here's the thing. You have money in your wallet and guess whose picture is on the money? The king who just died less than not quite a year ago. Um, so the reason you don't put the purse on the floor is because the king's face is on the money which is in your purse and it's like putting the king's face in the dirt. So big insult. So now even if I'm in a restaurant I put my purse on the table if there's a, a windowsill nearby, I'll put it there. They don't mind if you put it on a chair, uh, but sometimes there's not one. But uh, I had to get over the idea that it's rude to set your purse on the table. If that's the only place, if it, you, I probably I would end up putting it on my lap, but it's really hard to eat with your purse in your lap. So, um, but things to know. A uh, common thing in Southeast Asia, do not touch a child and especially do not touch them on the top of their head. And um, the lecture, they didn't talk about why, but what I've been told by uh, friends who, when I was growing up, they were in the Vietnam War and if they'd had any um, uh, connection with hill tribes, because the hill tribes throughout 
Southeast Asia are all pretty related because they all migrated through China, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and um, the Hmong people especially. And they all have that um, taboo about touching a child or anyone on the top of the head. And what I've been told is that they believe there's a cord that goes from the top of the head up to heaven. And if you touch someone on the top of the head, it breaks that cord. So you can imagine that would be very upsetting to them, especially if it's their child. Um, tai Chi. Uh, I have a special brand of Tai Chi. I think I'm going to leave that for next time because I didn't bring the, the container, but I will show you it next time. They just came out with a Thai uh, tea flavor, too. Um, um, if you have questions about Thailand, I'm not an expert, but I've lived here a year now, so I do know everything you need to know to survive. Um, please feel free to ask me if there's something that you want to see on the videos that uh, you're very interested in please let me know that too I'm trying to choose things that are not the typical tourist stops like uh, the cotton fair for instance a lot of Farangs foreigners don't know about things like that and the trip that we took out into the mountains for um, a textile fair and going to the museum that was out in the mountains in a little village those are not typical so that's really all part of what this website is about is really not off the beaten track living rough and not about typical tourist things and I doubt if I'll ever do a review about a bar you never know but probably not I've only been in a bar once since I've been overseas that was in China with a young friend who was still in her teens just barely drinking age and uh, it's quite a story so we'll we'll do that sometime but um, yeah so I want the unusual things so if you like textile arts if you like um, jewelry you know the jewelry making here is amazing um, there is ceramics and woodwork I don't know a lot about that they're really famous for the cheek wood furniture but it's not something I'm in the market for because it's very expensive and although I'm on a retirement visa they only do it one year at a time so I'm very reluctant to buy things like furniture and uh, many people if they really really love it and they can afford it they will buy the teak furniture and have it shipped home but I'm not I'm not in that price range so um, if somebody's really interested in it I will probably want to talk to you do a little um, uh, live stream with you and find out exactly what kind of things you need to know because I'm not a collector and I'll never be a collector of uh, cheap furniture but I can certainly do the research and and then go out and do interviews if I know uh, what things are important to the collectors so that's about it for this time I'm sorry it's so late I am just so happy that I was able to do this because my Mac computer is old and it just started crashing and I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to do anything until I got a new computer but uh, I took a couple of days just cleaning everything off and putting it on a hard drive everything that I could get off the hard drive on the computer I put on my portable hard drive and it seems to be okay I think the video is what did it because it's an older computer and I think um, the amount of uh, random memory that it takes 
to do a video and edit it is just too much because the computer has to have the video and then it has to save each of the parts as you're doing the editing and by the time you're done you have just a huge amount of parts so happy I was able to be here uh, hopefully I will have a new computer by next week so that any uh, thing I do that I'm going out and about I can take pictures of and I can uh, give you another little tour um, I do hope to do maybe um, a food tour uh, or maybe a Thai cooking class I don't have a kitchen but there are lots of Thai cooking classes and even if you don't ever cook the things that you learn in the, the class uh, you'll learn about a lot about Thai food so let me get off here because I'm wandering but if this is your first time or if you've been watching and you've returned thank you so much please please put a like or a comment and I would love to know where you are some people you know they don't want to put that information but just say your name and where you're from if you put a comment um, if you would like to share on Facebook I'm on Ravelry so um, I'm going to be making a big effort to try to be more visible in the next couple of months. So please let me know if you're out there and what you're doing and what you'd like to see, especially if it's about Thailand. Have a great week and hopefully I'll see you again in two weeks. Bye-bye. A big part of my big adventure in life has been about costuming. Costuming that I made, costuming that I designed, costumes that I wore. And so this is just a little taste of things that I've done in costuming over the years. I hope you enjoy it.